So we've seen a lot of questions and comments regarding materials used, um, some DIY home option body armor, and we've seen a lot of videos lately on DIY body armor. So we thought, seeing as we make body armor every day, we would do a series on DIY body armor. Now, during the series, we'll do a couple different styles, materials used, as well as level to achieve level 3A or level 3 or level 4, attempting to achieve different levels with some DIY body armor options. So we're going to jump into that series today and uh, and show you some options there. Now, all of these, these DIY body armor products that we're going to make are going to be things that you can source from a local hardware store. So obviously with the body armor we make in-house, it's professionally source products and Kevlars and different things like that. Um, but we, but the, with the video series, we want everything to be readily available materials that anyone could go out and buy and make body armor. It's kind of one of the stipulations we want to put on that. So today we're going to be doing a level, a level 3A body armor panel is what we're going to try and make. So level 3A is your handgun rated armor. So this is going to stop your 9mm, 357s, 44 max. Uh, this armor is soft, so it's flexible. Um, usually this is made from the hybrid materials of Kevlar or UHMWPE. Ours uses a hybrid Kevlar approach, so a few different Kevlar materials. So these are conform better to your body. They're better concealable options. These are what police officer vests are typically made out of, our level 3A panels. Um, so we're going to try and make a level 3A soft armor option today. I've seen a lot more DIY hard armor options, but not many attempts at a DIY soft armor. So we thought we'd throw that together again and see what we can get. So what we're going to be using today is a welding blanket. So we just got this from the hardware store, ran down the hardware store, picked this up. It is a fiberglass material. So fiberglass is used for body armor, not necessarily body armor panel so much, but a lot of times are body armor plates, but it's used in body armor paneling, uh, like bulletproof rooms and different things like that. Fiberglass is used. Usually it's a, it's resin together and compressed, uh, but we're gonna try and use it today to make a soft, soft panel. All the materials and tools, equipment we're gonna use today, simple tools right here. Uh, will be readily accessible equipment. The idea is that anyone could go get the materials and has access to the tools needed to make this body armor. So that's what we're gonna dive into today. We'll throw, lay out this fiberglass blanket material. We're gonna take our level 3A panel, use it as a template. Um, so it's gonna be the same size and comparison. Uh, that's kind of important. This is a 10 by 12 panel, it's a pretty standard panel. Now size does matter, regardless of what anyone tells you, size does matter. Uh, and that's just really with back face deformation and things like that. So if you have a larger panel, it's going to be able to eat more easily absorb the impact energy and is going to affect your uh, back face deformation. So we're going to make these the same size as our panels. And really, we're going to do a comparison uh, as part of this series between, you know, our body armor versus DIY. We'll measure the effectiveness, your cost, really the stopping capabilities uh, between, you know, a DIY option and what we offer. So you can kind of compare those two and see what you're looking at. Of course, safety is paramount. So I've got my gloves and my glasses and uh, we'll lay this fabric out. We'll measure, mark it and start cutting it. If my seamstresses see me using these scissors to cut this, they will kill me. So they're not gonna be allowed to watch this video. <laughs> That's also important. <laughs> Do this after hours when no seamstresses are around because it'll ruin the scissors. Just like when I was a child and I would cut open the Otter Pops with my mom's sewing scissors and she would kill me. <laughs> Some things never change. <laughs> So we've got five layers here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go sew these five layers together. So one thing about soft body armor when you're using Kevlar materials is sewing it is actually very critically important. If you just leave these layers loose, put a fabric over the top of them, uh, it's not going to perform the same as if you're sewing it. Um, it's kind of interesting. Each manufacturer will put different sewing in, in each of these different patterns or how much they do. Um, we're gonna do a single border or a, probably a double stitch border around the whole thing and we'll do it in layers of five. Reason being is, once again, we're gonna use our industrial grade sewing machines, 
So obviously those could punch through, you know, 20, 30 layers of this, no issue. Um, your at home one might not be able to do that, but this stuff's thin enough, I'm pretty confident that uh, at home sewing machine can probably punch through five layers at a time. So we'll do these in bundles of five, then we'll put them together, stack them together and uh, in different variations to test it and see how many is needed to stop, to stop your uh, 44 Mac. So we'll go to the sewing machine and get that done. All right, so we got our five layers here of that welding blanket. We're just gonna run through the sewing machine. Like I said, we'll do a single stitch or a double stitch around the border and uh, then we'll get the next five and do the same thing. So here we have 25 layers. So we got five layers of those five panels each. Um, you can see this stuff is super messy. It's a real pain to work with. Uh, it's frays all over the place, big time pain in the butt. But um, because of that, it's so messy. What we're gonna do to keep it from fraying around anymore, we're gonna sew a, just a fabric case to slide it up all in and seal it up in there. Um, just to seal it shut. And then we're gonna go test it. So we'll see. We did 25 layers, just guessing on that. So our Kevlar materials that we use, we use a couple different Kevlar materials, but this stuff, nine layers of the Kevlar is rated to stop. Um, nine mil, 357, 44 mag. This stuff's not near as thick. I don't think it's gonna perform near as well. So we'll try 25 layers and we're gonna see how it does. But yeah, you can just see that, look at that mess. Um, definitely not the cleanest thing. This is not a the cleanest work, but it's gonna do the job. It'll all, the results should be consistent. Say we got that single stitch around each layer of five. So we'll throw a cover on this and it'll be ready to go shoot. So here I just sewed up a simple sleeve. This is just a canvas material. Uh, the material on the outside really isn't going to make much difference on your stopping capabilities unless it's a ballistic material. Uh, really it's more about weight. Um, this material is just a canvas. It's a pretty heavy duty good material, um, but really it's just there to, to protect. So we're just gonna shove it in there, but it's not going to add any ballistic capabilities to this material. So we'll weigh that first. Let's see how much that weighs, uh, just so you know. But 2.107, so basically two pounds, 11 ounces. So that's obviously a lot heavier than ours, uh, just our Kevlar one. The Kevlar one weighs about a pound, um, just over a pound. So this is much heavier. The other thing is it's a lot thicker. And then your last thing here is how is it gonna do? So my prediction is this thing is really, really flimsy. Uh, it is just super soft and flimsy. I think it may stop the bullet. The bullet could stop in there in the nine millimeter but I don't think there's any way this is passing the back face deformation test. Um, but we'll go test it, shoot against that clay box, and we'll see what it does. So to the range we go. All right, we're at the range today. We've got our DIY body armor. Just remember this is made out of 20 layers of the fiberglass welding cloth, um, welding blanket. So what we did is we took those 20 layers, we sewed them from layers five at a time, put them in here, um, and then just sewed fabric cloth around, uh, fabric cover on the outside. Now we're gonna put it up against this clay box here, strap it down and uh, test it to see if it meets the 3A standards. Now, I don't think it's going to, I think this will probably stop the nine mil for sure, maybe the 44 mag. Uh, I just don't think it will meet the standards on back face deformation. Uh, it's really, you can see it's just really flimsy. There's not enough structure. I just, I think it needs to be a little more rigid in order to prevent that back face deformation. Uh, but we'll give it a test and see what kind of results we get. All right, so first up, we're gonna shoot with the nine millimeter. It's just 115 grain out of your Glock 19. We'll see how it performs against that. Hey. Let's go see. So you can see impact right there, and just by looking at that, it looks like it stopped it pretty well. Turn to see, but let's see. Oh, it didn't. That blew right through. Dang. Well, it didn't even stop your nine millimeter. 20 layers of that stuff won't even stop a nine mil. So, I guess see back, how far down it goes in. back to light goes all the way to the back. You can see there's a, there's a wood plank in the back of this and uh, I've got wood in the hole. So it blew all the way through there and hit the backboard. Didn't go through the backboard, but uh, it hit that backboard, so. 
Anyway, I guess back to the drawing board. That is not going to provide you much protection from anything. We can, uh, we can shoot it with the 44 mag just for fun. We got it out here, I guess. But uh, we'll try. There's a few other variations on this we can do. Obviously, one is more layers, um, which is necessary because it didn't stop that penetration. And, uh, and then there's a few other things we can look at as well. So we'll start with that. Let's just shoot it for 44 mag just because. Why not? And then... Uh, then we'll do a V2, I guess. All right, so it didn't stop the nine millimeter, but we took all the time to make that thing. And we're already here. We got the 44 mag, so we just want to shoot it one more time. So we'll see what the 44 mag does. I'm sure it'll be a similar result. Oh, I shot off to the side. <laughs> you can just see that hole. All right, 44 mag, take two. Oh baby, I hit that one. We have a fair hit. That one's right there, it's pretty center mass. So I can just feel it all bulged up there. Oh, surprise, surprise. Man, those are, that's a huge hole. That's your chest if you're wearing this DIY body armor. You get a close up on that? Look at this thing, come here, get a close up on this. It's massive. So, verdict is, this doesn't work. We need, we need more layers. We need more layers or we need something else additional in there. So, we will try another one. Hey, you dead if you made that DIY body armor. So, end results for this soft body armor panel made from that fiberglass welding blanket were not promising. Uh, nine millimeter blew right through it, 44 mag blew right through it without any issues. Now this stuff, this fiberglass welding blank, like I said, fiberglass has been used for body armor, still is used for armor protection. Um, a common DIY version is actually, you can utilize this with epoxy and we'll, we'll probably do a video on that later. Uh, but we really wanted to try and do something soft body armor option wise, just haven't seen a lot of it done. Um, but this is not the answer. Now, that doesn't mean this can't work. We'll, I think we'll probably do another version of this, layer up some more layers, see how many layers it actually will need to stop your, your pistol rounds, um, as well as measure the back base deformation. But 20 layers of that stuff in a 10 by 12 sheet, it's just not gonna do the trick. It doesn't even stop the penetration, let alone back face deformation. So, on to round two.